friends went out on a Friday But she ended up at my place Cause they didn't throw where to invite Hi guys, so I wanted to hop on here really quickly and explain what a monotype is, how it differs from a monoprint, and also how I made mine. So let's get into it. So some of you may or may not know that I have been investigating the theme of meat in my art GCSE. So I went to the butchers and I took loads of photos of different pieces of meat that I thought would be really cool to make into monotypes. So the main difference between a monotype and a monoprint is, and I'm basically just reading this from Google, but a monoprint is one of a series and usually it's done on like an etched plate with acid and a monotype is done by putting oil paint or like printmaking ink onto a sheet of glass or a sheet of acetate and then like squashing that onto a piece of paper so you only get one original copy and then you get a series of ghost prints which is what I wanted to do so <clears throat> so first off I got my materials together so I got all of my materials from the art studio in school and I did it there um, because they have a printmaking press thing <sighs> so I got a paintbrush I got a sheet of acetate masking tape for the edges my finished meat photos as well as my oil paints and printmaking press and like newsprint or something to fill the printing press with. So then when I got my materials together, I'd already done a painting before with the same sort of colors that I wanted to use in this painting. So I reused the same oil paints from that because the oil paints hadn't dried out yet. <laughs> so from those colors, which I will put on screen now, it's like a series of reds and whites and also Naples yellow. Naples yellow is bay, honestly. So I taped my image that I wanted to be painting from onto some wooden board and I taped some acetate over that. And then I just basically dipped my paintbrush into the paint and started painting. And this was actually the second time that I'd done a monotype print. And before my teacher was there and he was like talking me through it. So he showed me how thick to apply the paint onto the acetate and obviously with this one my teacher wasn't there so I kind of estimated it and I did go a little bit too thick so go thinner than you think when you're applying oil paint onto the acetate otherwise it will make these weird streaky things of the oil paint squishing around when you put it through the press and you can do this with printmaking ink, but oil paint is easier to use and easier to mix, so I just wanted to paint with that. And this is what it looked like when I was finished applying the oil paint, or so I thought. <laughs> Basically, I went down to the printmaking room and then I put my wooden board out and took the masking tape off the edges of the acetate and then I lay it on the grey table and I could see very very clearly that I had missed out huge patches of the painting so I went through with a brush just to kind of clear up the excessive negative space and I didn't really add any more paint to it because I'd already put my palette away I just blended what was there at this point I was super happy with my painting on my acetate so I decided that it was time to print. Even though there was only going to be one like official print, I wanted to make a few ghost prints. And I also needed to blot the monotype. So I got a few sheets of A3 from the paper trays. What blotting does is it means that the 
paint that you put down is not spread so thickly and it just removes some of the excess paint. So I blotted it, which is basically just putting a sheet of paper on top and then pressing lightly with your hands. And I pulled off the paper from the acetate and I really, really liked the kind of sinews. Is that how you say it? Sinew? Sinew? The sinews that it gave off. So I blotted it twice which was probably a mistake on my behalf because the second blot didn't come out so well because the oil paint had already been used up on the first blot. And even though I thought that I blotted really, really well, there was still some paint that got through. There was a section of the painting that I made really, really thick, so um, I didn't blot properly even though I thought I blotted properly. I actually didn't mind the slightly streaky effect that um, was produced by me not blotting properly. It did detract a little bit, but it was bearable. Like, I'm not a complete perfectionist. From the blotting, I moved on to the actual printing. And the printing is basically just the same process as the blotting. I aligned the corners of the acetate with the paper, and then I kind of sandwiched it with the newsprint and newsprint is basically what people use to make newspapers i think it's not dissimilar from the stuff that newspapers have been made out of great english buzzy so yeah it's basically a really really thin sheet of paper and i use the newsprint as padding when i put it through the press i put the acetate and the paper into like this covering of newsprint. It was basically just a bigger sheet that was folded. So it would pad the press and make sure that all of the oil paint is transferred onto the final monotype print. So I ran it through the press and I had a bit of trouble figuring out which way the press went and like which way I had to turn the wheel to get the press moving but I figured it out in the end so that was fine. <laughs> and okay this was a bit tragic when I was taking off the um, acetate from the paper I kind of got my camera angle a bit wrong and you can only see the side of my face but we're just gonna ignore that. Anyway, back to the point. I peeled off the acetate from the paper, being careful not to smudge the oil paint that was on the acetate or the oil paint that was on the paper because I wanted to make ghost prints. Ghost prints are basically secondary prints and these are a bit duller in colour because the oil paint has been used up. They're a bit more subtle, so I made a few of those, basically just using the same process that I said before of putting the A3 paper onto the acetate, making sure the corners line up and then sandwiching it in newsprint and feeding it through the press. And all this time I kept on washing my hands with white spirit whenever I got oil paint on my hands just so my prints would come out pristine and really fresh looking, that is what you want to do when you're making prints. Because when I've made monotypes and lino cut prints in the past, I've got fingerprints all around the edges and that just really, really detracts from the image. So please try to avoid getting fingerprints on your final prints. Wash your hands, people. But anyway, with that ghost print done, I was left with all of my prints and my acetate sheet. I did two blotching sheet things. I did one normal print and one ghost print. In particular, I was particularly, that was too many particulars. I was particularly pleased with the first blotching because as I said, it created that kind of sinewy, sinewy, I still need to learn how to say that word, but that kind of texture. But yeah, that's how I made my monotypes and 
Like there's no one way to do this. I'm sure lots of people have different techniques, but this is the technique that worked for me. <laughs> By no means am I a master of monotyping. I just wanted to share how I personally made them. So hopefully this has helped some of you guys out. Hopefully you can now monotype to your personal satisfaction. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. And if you did, definitely do remember to subscribe. I know I never really say that. I don't like asking people to subscribe, but I'm so, so nearly at a thousand um, subscribers, which is just mad. Uh, so definitely do. And I will see you all in the next video. So goodbye my people and yes, see you.